bar gets me off like my lawyers when the fucking judge lets me off things new players should know in my opinion anyways roll it Welcome back, your highnesses, distinguished guests, humans, non-humans, and prestigious, esteemed, honorable attendees. And of course, let's not forget the window lickers. How are you all doing today? No angry and sexually frustrated little men around today? No? Okay, it's good to hear. So, before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you enjoy my content. And also use your daily on that like button and hit that bell. It would help me a ton. And also, huge thanks to my three channel members, Athena, Juice the Ninja, and Foul Land. You guys are by far my favorite window lickers. I appreciate you being here. And you too can also become a member if you are jealous of these three awesome individuals by pressing join that's right next to the subscribe button, but only if you want to, of course. So now that all of that is out of the way, let's begin. Here are some things I think new or newish players should know and do in Neverwinter. You know, things that will be helpful to them in their Neverwinter journey. One. Keep your hands above your keyboard, no matter how hot your avatar is. Leveling up. Don't rush your leveling up experience since your first time happens only once. Use that time to get familiar with the class you have chosen. You know, its powers, movements, and overall capabilities. Just enjoy the game and take your time. You know, some people just like to rush through stuff. Then they miss the whole point of it. Just enjoy it, you know? Enjoy it. Try all classes at least once. The reason for this is you don't know which class is a better fit for you until you try them all. You might, for example, start with a paladin and enjoy it, only to find out that you had more fun playing a warlock in the long run. And if you do end up trying each class, make sure to switch to a new class once you reach level 20. You don't want to invest more time and resources into a class you might not end up playing. This is exactly what I did nine years ago and ultimately decided to play the rogue. Try it for yourself and choose the class you enjoy most and is a better fit for you as a person. Complete your adventures. They offer rewards that can help you on your journey with rewards like insignias, inventory bags, companion refinement, in-game currencies like astral diamonds, and much more. Also do your campaigns every day until you complete them eventually. Campaigns also help you get rewards like gear and boons to help you with your stats and your character progression as a whole. Also don't forget to claim your rewards by using the claim rewards button on the bottom right of the campaign screen. There's usually an indicator that something hasn't been claimed when the window is lit up like this glowing tab up here or down there. Check for current ongoing events by clicking the little dots or circles under the time right up here so you can see which ones are active. To find out more about any of these events, just click on the name and get a small window with a tooltip about said event. You can do all the events or just participate in the events that are decent and offer you rewards that you are interested in. And there are literally all types of events, from events that grant you campaign currencies to events that grant you mounts, companions, overloads, and much more. Check your calendar daily by pressing the L on your keyboard. The calendar tab will show you what date and time that an upcoming daily or future event will begin. You can even go to the calendar on the right and hover over these lines and see what event is going to happen on that day. And by clicking on it, it will show you a small tooltip about set events. You can even set reminders. It's a very useful tool to plan ahead and know what to expect in the future. Check your claims for possible rewards or promo rewards from Cryptic or wherever else. When it lights up and flashes, click on it and see what tab or tabs are flashing and check for the specific rewards that have been added to that tab. Check the Zen store on occasion for discounts and new items that you might be interested in. I won't go into detail about each and every item being sold in the Zen store. Just know it's there if you need it. And if you do buy something, make sure it isn't too expensive and that it helps your character. Amongst the most common and sought after things to buy is VIP, race rerolls, character slots, bank slots, moats, and sometimes even cosmetics. You'll just have to go through it yourself and see what you like, if anything. Buy VIP if you can afford it. It's literally $10 a month, which is 33 cents a day. VIP offers you so many awesome things, like signposts, mailboxes, immunity to injuries. You can even summon your bank. You can invoke from anywhere. There's no posting fees in the auction house. You get discounts and reduced costs to items in the Wonders Bazaar. You get daily reroll tokens for rerolling dungeon chest rewards. And you also get one enchanted key per day to open a lockbox. And many more benefits that all depend on your level of VIP. There are 12 levels of VIP. And missing a month does not reduce your total level of VIP. Your VIP level will always remain the same. And once you get a new one, the level will go up. And once you're maxed out, you're maxed out. 
There is no going down, only renewals of VIP. If there is something in this game that is worth buying, it's definitely VIP. And you can view all the benefits yourself by opening the Zen store and clicking on the VIP info tab right here, and then scrolling through every level of VIP to see all the benefits. Also, if you do have VIP, don't forget to collect your daily enchanted key and reroll tokens in this tab down here. Make sure to collect them every single day. You can use them right away or accumulate them, but that is up to you. But definitely don't let them go to waste by not grabbing them on a daily basis. Invoke. Invoke at least once a day on all your characters to get your celestial coins for a chance at a coalescent moat from celestial bags. If you can invoke the full amount of times daily, that's even better. But depending on how many characters you have, it can be annoying and or time consuming. But definitely a great source for elixirs and celestial coffers that have a chance to give you coalescent moats. And moats are expensive and needed for upgrading. So all you have to do is press control and I to invoke. You will see what rewards you got for the invocation after you have invoked. It'll pop up in the middle of your screen. You can invoke up to six times per day on each character. In my advice, save your celestial bags of refining. They have a chance to give you discount coupons for Zen store purchases. So only open them if you're about to make a purchase in the Zen store. To claim invocation rewards, click I for your inventory to open up. Then go to the second tab right here, and then go right here to where it says celestial coins, and then click on spend to open the celestial coin shop. Here you can buy elixirs you might need and buy coffers of celestial enchantments for a chance at a coal moat. So yeah, definitely invoke. It's worth it, and if you can, on multiple characters. Find a guild to be a part of, but try and find a guild that is aligned with your goals, preferably a non-toxic and helpful guild. You might actually need to hop in and out of a few guilds until you find the one that you like the most. Guilds in general are a great source of information and a great place to make new friends and socialize. Being in a guild also offers you many benefits, like guild boons that give you more stats and even faster mounts. Most guilds will also be part of an alliance, which consists of 13 guilds in total, and they have a general alliance chat that everybody can interact and chat in. It's a place where groups get formed and friendships also get made. You can find guilds spamming in zone chats when they are recruiting new members to add to their rosters, or you can search for guilds yourself through the search tab. Press the letter O on your keyboard to open the search tab, then navigate to the find guild section, and then you can set your search parameters to find the guild with the goals and qualities you prefer. And you can even set your search parameters to level 20 to find the maxed out guilds currently. Granted, some people do play guildless, but 99% of the community are in fact part of guilds since it's extremely beneficial. And those guilds are in turn most likely in alliances, which is even better. Say hi in your guild in alliance chat. Let others know you're there. Get to know people this way and don't be afraid to ask them for help. Also participate in dragon flights or marauders whenever your guild does them. All these things help your guild's growth and help you make new friends. You can run at least three heroic encounters in your stronghold and other stronghold dailies if you have time. Also try and tend your stronghold plots. It helps your leaders build quicker. If you don't know how, just ask your guild leaders or leaders. They'll show you or tell you how. Run daily queues that you have unlocked or have the item level for. Astral diamonds are vital and queues help you reach your daily cap of 100,000 astral diamonds. This is one of the main astral diamond makers in the game because it's not based on RNG. You simply just do this and you get astral diamonds. So yeah, make sure to do these on a daily basis. Check the auction house daily for good deals or possible things you might be interested in buying, like mounts, companions, reinforcement kits, and much more. Also, you can use the auction house to sell unbound items that you don't use and want to sell to make a profit. Ask questions. There's so much information needed out there. So ask questions about anything or everything from anyone. If they don't answer, fuck them. Ask somebody else. Don't be afraid to use YouTube for more information on builds, how-tos, and guides from various content creators like myself. There's me, there's Northside, Enyo, Nova, Gus Archer, Neverwinter for Noobs, Varon, Aron, can't, don't know how to say your name, Aster, Garlan, Aragon, and a few more I can't remember or don't even know about. But there's tons of info out there, so don't be shy to Google and search for information if you can't find the answers you need from others. No shame in that. Google is your friend, and so is YouTube, preferably YouTube. And if you go to YouTube, make sure to sub to me because, you know, I said so. And yeah, that's about it. Keep a check on your inventory. Sell your junk for gold, turn your refinement stones to RP, and manage that inventory space accordingly, or else you'll have a hard time finding stuff you need and just clutter everything up. 
Also, use your personal bank space and shared bank space to store items or stuff you want to keep. You can even use your personal bank to transfer companion tokens, trade bars, astro diamonds, etc. to other characters you might want to use. You won't have as much space as I do, so don't expect what you're seeing here to be yours. I bought and maxed out all my bank spaces over the years. And even if you don't buy any more spaces, it's still extra space you can use. And the transferring is free, so it doesn't really matter. You can create a guild on an alternate character to use as extra storage. Many of us do this in game, including myself. All you need is yourself and four more players to create a guild. You don't even need to upgrade the guild, just leave it at level one. But you can buy inventory slots with astral diamonds if you want more space to store stuff in. That's your choice, but it's definitely a good investment and doesn't take much time. Use your trade bars wisely. You get trade bars by opening lockboxes or from dungeon chest as loot on occasion. Clicking the Tarmalin Bars tab opens a trade bar store which has many useful items you can buy, from epic insignias to companion tokens to mount upgrade tokens and much more. You can also wait for trade bar discounts before making any purchases to save some more trade bars along the way. Definitely a must do. Learn and do basic profession tasks starting with alchemy and or jewel crafting. Make things you can sell for gold, such as heart shorn rings, etc. And once you get really good at it, then maybe you can sell better items to make some extra astral diamonds in the future. It can be profitable, sometimes. Get familiar with the Sage Shop. Brada sells rank 1 enchantments, so if you need any, here's where to get them for cheap. So follow me. He's literally right here. Sometimes the auction house does sell some enchantments for cheaper for some odd reason. So check the auction house as well. But Sage Shop is definitely a good place to buy cheap enchantments. Right click players names to ignore players who are toxic and you don't like interacting with. No point in keeping toxicity around if it bothers you. In the same way, you can also add friends or inspect them or add them to queues, etc. Take the time to learn your class mechanics by checking YouTube or simply attacking target dummies or fighting mobs and bosses until you find your own preferable rotation or find an optimal one for what you want to achieve. Join a Neverwinter Discord channel, preferably your own guild's Discord if they have one. It's another great source of socializing and information. Don't be shy, trust me, it's great. Do legacy quests. There's two to three quests a week that you can split over seven days. Even intro quests for the campaigns you just started can count towards legacy quests. So do a little towards them every day. See Sabella each Monday and get her quests. Complete the Undermountain Adventure to unlock Master Expeditions. Expeditions are a good source of various mid-level gear and rough Astro Diamonds if the appropriate Resonance Rune is used, and they're pretty fun to do too. And you can also farm weapons like the Watcher set or whatever. Just ask your guild, they know. Start the campaign descent into Avernus to get access to Juma Bags at the Valenha Zone. It's a good source for gear and has the potential to drop mounts, companions as well as potions, moats, health stones, rough astro diamonds, and more. Definitely a must for new players, so get that done. Once you are able to, do the Sharandar and Dragonbone Veil campaigns for pants, shirts, and companion gear. There's a lot of gear in abundance in those areas, so maybe you find something better than you already have. Start developing your companion and mount collections. The 10 best quality of each defines your overall bolster, which magnifies the prospective benefits. 100% bolster is the max amount, and you need 10 mythic mounts and companions to achieve 100% bolster. If you have alternate characters, account-wide mounts and companions can be a good investment and definitely the way to go. Prioritize getting 5 mounts first to give yourself all 15 available insignia slots, which in turn will give you 5 insignia bonuses to your character and give you bonus stats and help you out along the way. Mounts and companions are vital to your overall stat progression and capping your stats, so definitely begin with those. Definitely get mount collars when you can afford it. They are a huge boost to your overall item level and give you extra benefits like damage, movement speed, crit severity, stamina, and a few more. Work towards capping your stats. Stat caps are at 90%. What stats you need to cap will depend on your class and your role. For example, damage dealers cap power, combat advantage, crit strike, crit severity, and accuracy in that order. For a tank and healer, the caps are slightly different, like awareness or defense or whatever. Spend your seals on gear, especially if there is better gear there than what you already have. Click on the seals vendor from your VIP or find one in Protector's Enclave. Then spend the seals on getting better gear or even just use them for transmutes to change your look. Either way, just use them up. No point in just having them sitting there. 
Join Zerg channels. Zerg channels are player-created chat channels, just like the one your guild has or your alliance or the simple zone chats. They are focused on different content in the game, and that way it gives you an option of various ways of finding groups if your alliance or guild is busy or offline. I personally think it's a very good tool to use outside of the Alliance, and most of us use them when needed. Ask your guild members about them, I'm sure they'll help you get invited to some of them. Do your Dread Ring Lairs for refinement and enchanting stones that you can use or sell. If you go to the Dread Ring Campaign window, click on the Schedule tab. You'll see all the Lairs and all the schedules of what drops from where. Dread Ring is very useful and rewarding, so definitely do that. Use Target Dummies to test your builds and see how capping your stats is coming along. You can find them in your Stronghold, in Protector's Enclave, in Dreadring, Chult, and various other areas. Don't be rude. Adding toxicity to the game ruins the mood for everyone, so try and be nice and helpful. And once you get real good at the game, you can teach others what I taught you or others have taught you as well. Just be nice, you know? Just pass it on. Pass on the nicenessness or the niceties. You know, just be nice. Do whatever, dude. And above all, have fun and enjoy yourself. Socialize and make friends. It's what MMOs are all about anyways. So that's about it. I'm sure there's way more things I could have added to this video, but I ran out of time and the video is long enough. So if any of you have any new ideas or know of other things I could have added for a future video like this one, make sure to let me know in the comments below. Until then, I'm just going to get the fuck out of here. You know, I've got other videos to make. i got other things to do. Make sure to sub. See you around. Galactic here. Peace out. Stay safe.